Hey, math students. I, um, this is probably cheating, but I used this little screenshot from some game show here to be a question of the day because I thought it was such a great question and really gets you thinking about some things you need to know for the GED. So let's take a look at this. This gentleman was asked, which of these square numbers also happens to be the sum of two smaller square numbers? So in order to understand this problem, you've really got to understand the language here. First of all, let's start with square numbers. Oh, I need a different color pen. This one's hard to read on this black screen. Okay. Oh, there we go. Pen. Yellow. Okay. So which of these square numbers also happens to be the sum of two smaller square numbers? So what is a square number? A square number are also known as our perfect squares. So the, for those of you who are mathy, you'll know it like this. 1 raised to the second power. That little power of 2 is also known as a square. And what does that mean? It means 1 times itself, which of course would just be 1. So 1 is a square number. Or if you took 2 and raised it to the second power, 2 times 2 would give you 4. So 4 is a square number. Uh, 3 to the second power, uh, or 3 times 3, um, is uh, 9, so 9 is also a square number. That's what I'm talking about. Those are the square numbers, and I could keep going with this list. I could square 4 and 5 and 6 and get all these various squared numbers. In fact, I think I'll get a few of them. 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 5 is 25. 6 times 6, or 6 squared is 36. Uh, but I just wanted to show it uh, for you visual students. It's not as easy to see on the number 1, but on the number 2, when they say it's a square number, they mean you can take four dots and make a perfect square out of it. It would be a 2 by 2. Same with nine dots. It'd be a 3 by 3. See how that makes a perfect square there, a 3 by 3. Same with 16 dots, I could make a 4 by 4 square, and so on and so forth. Okay, so... That's kind of how they get that name of being square numbers, okay? So which of these square numbers also happens to be the sum of two smaller square numbers? Okay, so uh, first one they have is 16. Is there any way that I could sum these guys to get 16? Uh, two of them, let's try. One plus four would give me five, nope. Uh, one plus nine would give me 10, nope. Nine plus four would give me 13, nope. I can't find a way to sum to 16. Uh, let's try the next answer, B. So I'm looking to get a sum of 25 from two smaller numbers. Uh, I haven't gotten 25 all these ways yet, so let's try it with 16 here. So 16 plus 1 would give me 17. Nope. 16 plus 4 would give me 20. Nope. But 16 plus 9 sure does equal 25. So just by trial and error, I found that 25 also ha happens to be the sum of two smaller square numbers. And I forgot to define sum for you. I just went on assuming that you know what sum means. The sum is the answer when you add. So when you add two smaller square numbers, you can uh, get this larger square number 25. But I have to tell you honestly, guys, I didn't really have to do all of that guessing and checking. Um, I actually already knew this. And the reason why I knew it is because of a very, very special triangle known as the 345 triangle. If anyone's ever done what's known as the Pythagorean theorem, you may have become acquainted with this triangle. Um, but I know that a triangle that's three inches or three anything, three feet, three yards, three meters uh, on one leg and four on the other leg, again, four inches, four yards, four meters, will have a beautiful perfect hypotenuse of five and that's that three four five rule which is proved by the pythagorean theorem you guys know a squared plus b squared equals c squared is the pythagorean theorem if you've never seen this before just stop the video right now we already figured out one way to solve this problem but if you're familiar with the pythagorean theorem which is on the ged test this 3, 4, 5 totally satisfies this number. And so this is a triangle that we very frequently use. Watch what I'm saying. If I plug in 3 for A and 4 for B, will 5 for C really work? Let's check by simplifying the left and right hand sides. But let me erase my crappy work first. Okay, so 3 squared we know is 9. 
4 squared is 16. I haven't done my addition yet. I'll drop it. I'm trying to figure out if the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Uh, 5 times 5 is 25. And then, of course, 9 plus 16 is 25. Um, so because of that very famous triangle that shows up all the time, sometimes in disguise, like it might look like this, 300, 400, 500, it's the same basic triangle. It's just been enlarged. But anyway, um, is because of this triangle that shows up all the time, I actually knew what this answer was. So correct answer here is B. Love this algebraic reasoning we're kind of developing here. And uh, if you have any questions about this or any other math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.